I'm going to sue their asses. Holy! Hmm. I like to minimize human interaction. You can't really trust anyone. The last step was for us to go to court. Mm-mm. I ain't doing that, honey. Hey, Chopsticks! On the menu today is... Clams! Now, if you are new to my channel, welcome! My name is Merrick. Nice to meet you. I film mukbangs and ASMR, so if you are interested in these types of videos, make sure to subscribe! Without further ado, let's get started! Alrighty, so I have my clams right in front of me. I am starving! Let's see, everyone. Mm-mm-mm! Mm-mm-mm! Who's ready for some clams? Because I... Um, okay, which one should we go for first? Let's choose one from the back. This one looks like a good one. Open wide. Got it. Got it. Slay. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, that was really effortless, right? Just one slurp and all the meat's gone. Mmm. Sometimes I wish clams had more meat inside their shells, but it's really delicious either way. Mmm. Mmm. Is anyone else a seafood lover here? I cannot get enough of seafood. Oh my god. Seafood is so delicious. Before I move on to the story time, I'm going to talk about the food really quickly. Because I know some people on my channel do like it when I go over the food, such as where I got it, how long it took me to make, how much it costs, all that good stuff. Mm. But before I get to the food, well, I guess I'm talking about food anyways. Um, I have a side of noodles right here. Check it out. Nice, right? These are some um, Korean sweet potato noodles. On the packet, I actually forgot to like bring it downstairs with me. It's like still in my kitchen. But the packet, these noodles are supposed to be like orange. Like, isn't that what sweet potato is? It's like an orange color. But for some reason, these ones are gray. I don't know why they deceived me. It was false advertising. I'm going to sue their asses. Not really though. So I got some noodles because I don't think, um, even though I have a lot of clams here, I think I'm going to be starving still. And I also have some of the clam broth with me. Oh no, I don't think I can show you guys or else it'll spill. Nope, not gonna happen. I'll show you from afar though. Do you see like the yellow without it spilling? Oh, not really, sorry. You just gotta trust my word for that. I have the clam broth right here, which I'll be going over a little bit later. Hmm. Some noodle action. Hmm. Mm. These are really chewy noodles. Maybe I can put it, yeah, put it here. See, the thing is, I want to pour the broth all over the clams. So the clams really soak up the flavors. But at the same time, I want to dip my noodles into the broth. And I can't really dip my noodles into this plate because all the shells are in the way. So I'm kind of like in a pickle. Merrick is in a pickle. What do I do? So that's why I decided to put the... Here, let me just put this on here as well. Without clinging the place together, because that's bad audio. You can't really see it. What happens if I put it here? Nope, gets worse. Okay, I think this is going to be as best as I can do. Um, yeah, uh, what, what was I saying again? Sorry, I lost my train of thought. So, like, if I have my broth like this, I can take these noodles like so. Ooh. Oh god, this is so long. Holy! Did you see how long that noodle was? Crazy, right? And dip it like that. Oop! It went all the way in. Oops, sorry for the clanging noises. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god. Mmm. Mmm. Oishi. Oishi, oishi, oishi. Oishi is so, um, or it's not so yummy, it's yummy in Japanese. I don't actually know. That's what vloggers told me, so for all I know, they could be lying to me. Mm. Okay. 
I love how I said I was going to talk about the food like five minutes ago and I never actually got to like the pricing, where I got it from, all that good stuff. So let's get to it right now. Mm. I feel like I have a lot to say in this mukbang. Do I have a lot? I don't know. Am I in a chatty mood today? I think I'm in a chatty mood. Maybe I'm in a chatty mood. Who knows? Hmm. Okay, so what you're seeing right now is two pounds of clams. Uh, each pound at my Asian supermarket where I got it from straight fresh from the tank not frozen Out of the tank. It was four dollars Canadian for each pound. Okay, four dollars four dollars Canadian is about 250 US So 250 US for each pound and I got two pounds 2.1 2.2 pounds came out to nine dollars Canadian Which is seven US so seven USD for this plate of clams Noodles were probably like 25 cents. Mm. I don't know why I'm doing that. You guys can see it better like this. Dip it in some broth. Oh, all the noodles went in. There we go. Mmm. 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 Let's talk about the preparation. So, this meal took me about 20 minutes to prepare, give or take. What I did was, um, I don't know if you have to do this with clams, but I just read a recipe online and they suggested doing this just in case. Each clam, I scrubbed it to make sure um, there's no excess dirt or bacteria on the clams before I steamed them. So I scrubbed each one. It took me, uh, I think the preparation for this, it took me like 10 minutes because like, I think there's probably 50 clams here. So I was like scrubbing each one to make sure all the dirt was gone. Put them in a steamer, steam them for five to six minutes until the shells open. The ones that do not open, throw them out. They're not good for you. I think they're dead or something. I don't know. Um, so just keep the ones that the shells open up while you're steaming it. Next step, maybe I should do like a cook bong of this to like show you guys. Hmm, mm, what was that? Did you guys hear that? I, I feel like I bit into a part of the shell. Okay, that's so weird. Mm. Maybe you guys didn't hear that. <laughs> um, what I was saying was, the next step was I chopped up some garlic. I sauteed the garlic over some oil on me low medium heat. I put the clams in, and then what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to use white wine but because I don't really drink alcohol and sorry things are dripping onto my sweatpants <laughs> this is why I always wear sweatpants underneath because if I was like wearing nice trousers then I would be really upset if they got dirty mm. So, because I don't really drink alcohol, I don't really use alcohol to cook with. I didn't have any white wine on hand. What I did have was some sake, 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 Japanese sake, from um, a family friend who gifted us some sake for Christmas. So since we don't really drink, we never like, like my family doesn't really drink, we never drank it. So I was just sitting in my drawer, drawer, uh, pantry, pantry, there we go. The kitchen version of a drawer is pantry. It was sitting in my, in my pantry for the longest time, so I decided to use it up. Because I didn't really feel like spending $10 on a bottle of white wine, using it once, never using it again. So I actually have the sake here with me today. This is what it looks like. It's uh, here, close up. Do you guys see it? Oh no, it's not in focus. Focus, kinda. It's um, a Japanese plum sake. So at first, I didn't know if you could actually use this in cooking, but my mom did some research for me. And according to her Chinese online food blogs, um, you can use sake, 
plum wine in cooking. And it, it's like a little sour tasting and that, that's the effect that white wine gives off. So I was like, perfect, this is a great substitute. Another substitute for white wine, if you don't have any on hand, but a recipe calls for it, um, you can use grape juice or apple juice, I've heard. Mm. I should specify, uh, when I say grape juice, I mean like the green grape juice, like the clear one, not the purple one. Mm. Oh my god. Did I finish go over, going over everything yet? Because I kind of want to move on to the story time. I'm actually kind of running out of breath because I've been chatting so much. Mm. I kind of want more noodles. If I run, if I run out of noodles, oof, it's so hard. I'm gonna get some rice. Actually, I'm just gonna dump the entire bowl of noodles into the broth. There we go. That's smarter. Um, so after uh, I added the sake into the garlic, I added the clams that were already cooked. I put the lid back on, let it reduce for uh, five minutes until it gets thicker, melted about a cup of, no, not a cup, a, a third. No, a half a cup of butter. Okay, no, maybe this is not a bad idea because I can't get it back out of the sauce now. Shoot. Okay, I can't talk because I'm using all my brain power to get these noodles out. Come on, come on. Ooh. Oh yeah, I got some. Maybe you guys do not care about this recipe at all. <laughs> And I'm just wasting my time telling you guys. Maybe all you want to know is just the story time and you're like, Merrick, hurry up with the recipe because we do not care. We just want to know what happens in the story time. Um, that's basically it, the recipe. I added the um, half a cup of butter in, I let it reduce some more, and then I, I served it. There you go. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Okay, are we ready to move on to the story time? JK, because we're moving on to the question of the day instead. Today's question of the day is, are you afraid to speak up? Are you afraid to speak up? Maybe it's an awkward situation, a confrontation. Are you afraid to speak up at work, at school, to your family members, to your boyfriend, to your girlfriend, to your grandma? Are you afraid to speak up? Let me know in the comments down below because I'm very curious to read all your responses. Now, it should come at no surprise that Merrick is afraid to speak up, I hate speaking up, I am submissive, I am quiet, I'm introverted, I'm a fly on the wall, the perks of being a wallflower. I hate speaking up in every situation. Like, say you're buying groceries and Maybe the cashier forgets to like give you a bag or something and you have to be like, oh, excuse me, can you give me a bag place to put my groceries in? Hate doing that. Hate speaking up. That's why I always go for the self-serve checkout lanes. I like to keep my human interaction to a minimum. Not sure if anyone can relate to that. Introverted, draining my energy, need my energy for more important things in life, such as eating, sleeping, or watching TV. The important things you know. Hashtag sarcasm. Not really though. Hashtag that too. Mm. Okay, so. Oh, I didn't do my story time intro yet. Wow, I'm such an amateur um, story time person today. Usually I always do like my story time intros. Sorry, forgive me everyone. How does my story time intro go? I kind of forgot, hold on. Uh, oh, I, I know my intro. Sometimes I get like a brain fart and I can't think of things on the spot. 
As you can tell by the title today, we are doing another story time! Yay! Story time, story time, story time, story time! He's ready for the story time, because I am. Go grab yourself a cup of tea, because we're about to spill it, y'all. There I go. Now I feel a bit more comfortable. <sighs> can you imagine doing a story time without the story time intro? Like, God, what kind of crime did you commit, Merrick? Mm hmm. Today's story time is called Getting Confronted. Dun dun dun! Getting Confronted. Who did the confrontation? Me or the other person? You'll find out shortly. Didn't that sound like a, a TV show? Like, like, I'm like, oh, we'll be back right after this. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, so today's story time is kind of a different format. Um, I don't really know how to explain it, so I'm gonna explain it anyways. I'm gonna try my best to explain it. Basically, there's kind of two parts to the story time. One part is it didn't happen to me, like it's not my story time. And the second part is it actually did happen to me and that's my story time. This will make a lot more sense shortly. And by shortly, I mean now, um, I was watching this YouTuber, I'm not going to name his or her name, but they posted a story time about the situation. And while I was watching their story time, I could really relate to it because I've been through the exact same thing. But it's funny because their story time, I was the other person of the story, like their story time involved them and another person and they're just talking about their perspective, how they felt, what happened from their angle. But I've been through the exact situation from the other person's side. And I just kind of want to uh, first like go over their story time and kind of go over the similarities and differences between our choices, our choices. Let's just keep it at that, our choices. Okay, there's definitely like more than 50 clams in here, I think. So, nothing, it's not like really, really exciting, but it's really, really relatable. On my channel, I like to make my story times very relatable. I don't like to be like over the top, exaggerate things, like some YouTubers on this platform, not gonna name any names, no shade. But my story times are very relatable, and this one, I feel like, like, if you have moved out of your, like, parents' house, if you live on your own with a roommate, you can relate to this for sure. This is bad because I'm running out of energy and breath, and we still haven't really started the story time yet. Uh-oh. Oh, it's so hard to get these noodles out once it's like in the broth. Oh well, I'll just eat it like that. So how the story time starts off is um, this, this YouTuber, let's call her, mm, let's call her Chloe. Okay, so Chloe just moved into this new apartment complex, okay? So she has a new apartment and um, she has, what did she say again in the story time? Wow, I'm like off to a great start. <laughs> Ah, uh, right. So, uh, Chloe, uh, her first week there, she's, um, she moves in, and then she attends a party. She comes back from her party at night, and she receives a note under her door. And it just says that she's being very noisy, she's playing her music very loud, um, 
the neighbor, which she doesn't know which neighbor it is. It could be the one above her, below her, beside her on each side. The neighbor doesn't appreciate it because she's blasting her music constantly from their perspective. Now, what do you guys think so far? Do you guys think, like, the neighbor was in the wrong? Do you think it is weird to leave a note under someone's door? Do you think it's awkward? This is what Chloe thought, okay? I feel like if one of my viewers is watching the YouTuber I'm talking about right now, like, if you know who I'm talking about right now, you know who I'm talking about right now. I'm retelling the story time. But in a very concise manner. For Chloe, she really disliked the note. She thought it was very passive aggressive. She doesn't appreciate the uh, indirectness of the problem. She said she would just rather have that neighbor confront her and like knock on her door and be like, oh, can you guys keep it down in here? It's really noisy. That is Chloe's perspective. So one day while she was outside walking her dog, She runs into the neighbor that made a complaint, uh, who, uh, the neighbor who wrote the note. Because this was about a month later, and she met the neighbor below her, beside her, and the unit next door, but not the other unit next door, like the one left of her, left of her but not the one right of her. And while she was meeting those neighbors, she was like, oh, did you write a note and slip it under my door? And all of them said no, right? So, while she was walking her dog, she runs into the neighbor that she hasn't met yet. And how she said, um, how she said, how, wait, how she said how she recognized her, or I don't, I don't know how to phrase that sentence. Basically, how she recognized the neighbor beside her was because she's seen her going in and out of the unit, but they just never had an opportunity to engage in a dialogue. So Chloe saw this as a perfect opportunity to A, meet the last neighbor that she hasn't met yet, and B, confront her about the note. So Chloe goes over and introduces herself, and she's all nice about it, right? She's like, oh, hi, I'm Chloe, I'm the neighbor next to you, I'm, I live in the new unit next to you, how are you doing? And then she brings up a note. She's like, oh, a month ago, did you slip a note under my door saying that um, I was blasting music and everything? And I forgot how the exact story time goes, but basically uh, Chloe knew for sure that this was the girl who slipped the note under the door. It wasn't any of the other three neighbors. And the girl flat out denied it. She was like, no, I don't know what you're talking about, Chloe. And how Chloe described this girl is she's very timid and shy, okay? And Chloe is a very assertive, um, direct person. She's not like mean about it. She's not just, she's not like, hey, did you leave this note under my door? Cause I wasn't being noisy. She was just like, hey, did you need leave a note under my door? Maybe you can work this out and solve it together. Solve this problem together. So that was basically her story time, okay? That was Chloe's story time. And her like whole story time, like the main thesis of the story time is she just doesn't like it when people are direct with her. And she appreciates it when people just talk to her face to face and work with her to solve a problem. Now, in the comments, everyone was writing, oh, maybe she's really shy, maybe she has social anxiety, so that's why she... I uh, just didn't want to go up to you and talk to you directly and why she wrote the note. Makes sense, in my opinion. How this relates to me, and probably like you've gone through this, this exact same situation. 
living in an apartment, having a noisy neighbor that blasts music really loud. Like I was saying in the beginning, I am on the opposite side of the story time. I was a person who was doing the complaining because when I used to live in an apartment, I never blasted music. I barely like played my um, movies, my TV shows like louder than whisper because like, I just like I was very self-conscious of other units because I know I wouldn't appreciate it when someone was blasting music. So um, I just wish the unit below me was a little bit more considerate, considerative, considerate, considerate. Like me. Can you guys tell that I'm losing energy right now? I feel like I'm slowly drifting into the food coma that I always drift into in my mukbangs at the end. So in my situation, I was a person doing the complaining, okay? Same situation, the unit below me was blasting music and because I hate being direct with people or talking face to face, like I said, I like to minimize human interaction. I wrote a note, just like the neighbor did. I wrote a note, being really friendly, just stating that, oh, your music is really loud, can you turn it down a bit? The last thing I want to do is go knock on the door of the person below me and be like, and say that to his face because <laughs> I don't like talking to strangers I just don't sometimes I don't even like talking to my friends so you expect me to talk to a stranger <laughs> no shade if you're watching and you're one of my friends in real life I love you on most days so I wrote the note and nothing changes like during the entire week, he's still blasting music, nothing changes. I wrote him two, three more notes, nothing changes. At this point, I think the average person would just go downstairs, like the unit below me, knock on the door and be like, hey, you're playing music really loud. Did you get any of my notes? All that, like all that stuff. I was going to say all that good stuff, but it's not a good situation. Hmm. <laughs> But no, that's not how Merrick operates in life. I do not talk face to face when I have to make a complaint. If a note won't work, an email will, okay? An email. So what I do is I contact our property management, the people who owns the property, the property manager, the leasing agent. I tell them the situation. I tell them that, oh, this unit below me is blasting music very, very loud. I took a picture of every wrote, or <laughs> I took a picture of every note I've written and I attached that to the email. And what I even did was while I was delivering the note to the unit, I filmed myself walking to the unit and the video was also date stamped. So I have tons of evidence. I'm not making this up. This has been going on for two months now. So I have like, I just have a lot of ammunition to like, I have a lot of like, I don't know how to describe it. I have, I have a lot of leverage, okay? So like, if there's any dispute at all, I can just play my cards and like, I, I think I'm more believable. Um, also what I did was when the unit was blasting music, I recorded, like I just hit record and you could like hear the music on the recording inside my unit. I also went downstairs, I went to the um, the door, like I went to the unit and I stand it outside their door and I just recorded like the music being blasted. So there's proof that they're actually blasting music. I like to cover all my bases before I make a formal complaint. Cause like, if you don't, if you don't have evidence, you kind of look stupid. <laughs> Just saying. Proof, pictures, get everything in writing. That's what I've learned in my adulting life so far. <laughs> Cause there are a lot of different types of people in this world. And unfortunately in 2018, you can't really trust anyone. I, you're not blood related to, I guess. 
I guess like you can trust your best friend. Actually, I should take that back because some people don't even trust their like siblings or cousins or parents. <laughs> I can't speak for everyone. I'm just speaking for myself. So um, I contact property management and they're, they said um, they'll work with the unit to resolve the dispute. Some of these shells are empty. <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you guys, I uh, chopped up some parsley, some Italian parsley, and sprinkled it on top of the clams. Here, I'll show you the parsley. There we go. Open wide. Got it. Slay. So me and this company, the property management company, we've been working together for about uh, a month and a half now and honestly nothing really changes. The company told me that they sent um, the tenant below me lots of warnings like letters of notice or whatever and nothing really changed. So the last step was to take it to court. And that's when you know that things are getting serious. And throughout this entire time, I never like I never wanted to knock on the door and be like, hey, can you turn like down your volume? Never. I would rather deal deal um, with this situation on email than talk to him in person. Because I'm sure like he'll be so angry. He'll be like, are you the one who's been leaving these notes here? Are you the one who like told on me, who told on the, le um, the leasing agent, who told the property management company that I've been blasting music really loud? Like, it was just, like, too far into the situation for me to go down and knock and be like, hey, what's up? I kind of want to get some rice because <laughs> I am still hungry and I'm almost done with clams. You know what? I think I will get some rice. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I got my bowl of rice that I can put into the sauce. Mm. See, the thing is, I love seafood, but it's really not that filling. Like, I need some carbs in me. Mmm. Mmm. Rice just goes along with everything. Now, if you're wondering what happens at the end of my story time, the last step was for us to go to court and that was like so 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 serious like that that just escalates things to like a whole new level because i've never been to court before <laughs> so um, at this point i think i was about th three I, I had three more weeks in my lease so i was just like you know why i don't want to go to court like we're gonna go to court they're gonna issue a verdict like it's just like not worth it for three weeks you know what I mean so what I did was I just toughed it out for three weeks I just like toughed out like kept listening to this music play in my unit kept listening to the music blare in my unit and at the end of three weeks I switched apartments basically I left now I know this story time isn't like the most interesting thing ever Nothing crazy happens, but I think the whole point of the story time is it's just interesting to like contrast the differences between me and Chloe. So from Chloe's point of view, she really thinks that a no is passive aggressive. She's 
she just hates it so much, she said, in her story time. Whereas I... Like, I, when I wrote the note, I didn't intend for it to be passive aggression. I wrote it because I just, like, like face-to-face -face dialogue for me with a stranger when a conflict is involved. It just really makes me uncomfortable. So that's why I wrote the note. Like, if I had to talk to a stranger and, like, it was like, a, oh, congratulations, you won a prize, I don't mind. Like, if it's something positive that you have to interact with a stranger with, if it's something positive that you have to interact with a stranger with, I'm not sure that that came out right. The sentence was really choppy. Mm. I don't mind. I don't mind interacting with a stranger if it's something positive. There we go. But if it's something negative, like a noise complaint, mm-mm, I ain't doing that, honey. Mm. Sorry if you're hearing some noise right now. People are upstairs. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like I really ran out of energy <laughs> near the end of the mukbang. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> I think near the end of the mukbang, I just like to eat. Is that strange? And this mukbang is like really, really long. <laughs> Usually, I aim for my mukbangs to be about um, 20 to 35 minutes. So I'm not sure how long this mukbang is. I feel like it's been going on for ages. <laughs> mm. So yeah, I guess I am afraid of confrontation. Or no, what was the uh, question of the day again? I am afraid of speaking up. Do you count like when I wrote the note to the unit below me, when I sent the email to the property management company, does that count as speaking out or speaking up? Because, like, in a way, you can say that, yeah, it was a form of speaking up because I didn't just sit there and tolerate the noise. I did something about it. And what I did was I wrote a note and sent an email. But some people only consider speaking up as a face-to-face -face dialogue. So if you use that standard, I guess I didn't speak up. I guess it's really subjective, right? All of these ones are empty. What happened? The meat like fell out, I think. Oh, this one's still there. Mm. Oh, the meat's right here. Do you guys enjoy these like chiller mukbangs near the end? I feel like I was monotone throughout the entire story time. I had like a dip there in energy. I feel like near the like very end, I'm getting a bit more energy. I don't know why. Strange, right? 
Mm. Mm. Clams are so good, oh my god. Last one. Are you guys ready for this? Open wide. It's a double one. There's two attached in there. Slay. Mmm. Do you guys want to see my plate of shells? I'll show you real quick. Check this out. Oh god. Oh, oop. Plates are clanging. Sorry about that. A lot of shells, right? Here, what happens? I, oh, oh no, I can't do it. Ah, there we go. You guys can see all the shells. It'll focus. Oops. A lot, a lot of shells. Hmm. Alrighty, so <clears throat> that is going to be all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed yet. Sorry, I had a burp. I always have a burp after I drink my water while I'm doing my outro. I don't know why, that's just how my body reacts. Uh, where was where was I in my in outro? Um, I forgot. Let me do it one more time now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. If you're not subscribed yet, if you are subscribed, make sure to turn on notifications by cl clicking the bell icon. Love you so much, Chopsticks, and remember to slay your day.